One of the challenges uh, has, for Culture Days uh, has been getting people in big cities out to events. Um, and so how has Winnipeg faced that challenge? It's faced it just fabulously well because I think that everybody in the city, large and small organizations, embrace the whole concept of Culture Days, including individual artists that live in a place called The Exchange that, you know, very hard to get around and stuff like that. Um, it just seemed that in Winnipeg they were waiting for it. They understood the concept. So from one end of the city, uh, from, you know, the Winnipeg Art Gallery, right down to the Manitoba Museum, right across the river to St. Boniface with all of the French uh, cultural activities there, down to the West End with the Aboriginal communities, they just... Um, we brought the concept to them and they said, yep, that's it. And so, and what we did to, to facilitate it was um, go to the city and ask them to provide buses so everybody can go from place to place. And that's been, a, that's been providing that kind of transportation really worked, but it didn't really matter. People, the, the weather so far has been fabulous. So people have been biking, riding and going from place to place. And it's really been, it's really been easy. Maybe it's easier because we've got one big main street and then one big bridge to go across. and and all that stuff. So we really connected the dots very nicely in the program. So everybody could see where it is and they picked their spot and they moved it around, like going to the fringe. Another question I had for you was um, maybe to talk a little bit about the role of leadership in the Manitoba experience. For example, um, uh, how you've reached out to other community leaders outside of Winnipeg? Well, that was the key because my milieu was inside in, with large organizations within the city. And for it to work for Manitoba, I had to really step out of my comfort zone. And so I started asking around and people gave me good advice and I listened, which is totally against my nature. And, and so they led me to the next group, you know, that led me to Sonia Lantier in the French group, and she's now my co-chair. And then they said, well, I said, how in the world would I organize the North, you know? And they said, you talk to this person called Crystal Coles in Flin Flon. And Flin Flon is a, a town that every single, every single citizen either dances, sings in the choir, or writes, or plays an instrument. And I said, well, how, what, you know, where would you go from Flint Lodge? Oh, she said, I'll go all the way up to Churchill. And she did. In Churchill, there's a choir that sings all Canada in four languages. In Thompson, Manitoba, there's a soprano that has performed in, in, uh, in, in houses in, in Spain and all around Europe. And she lives in Thompson. And, and so we just pl she just plugged us into all these wonderful artistic people, and especially the Aboriginal artists. It's been fabulous. So it's word of mouth going from place to place.